we'll receive nothing when we go out. Praise the Lord. But if we come in expecting, we'll go out, listen, filled up with the power and the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I expect souls to be one to the kingdom of the Lord. Sunday morning, I expected somebody to get saved. Bless God, and we thank God for that in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. We need to rejoice, I'm telling you, hear me, when people make commitments to the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, open them to the book of John, the Bible trivia. Hallelujah. If you don't have a King James, you're in trouble. Because tonight, what I want you to do, I want you to go to the book of John. And uh, if, as we go into the book of John, I want you to, to pick out every scripture in the book of John that has barely, barely in it. And then I want you to read it out loud and listen to what the Lord has to say in this verily, verily. Now understand something. How many know what verily, verily means? It means that Jesus is about to say something very, very, very important. Hallelujah. So he puts that verily, verily in that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Now look through John. As you start looking through John and somebody sees something in there that says, Verily, verily, I want you to just start reading it. Would you do that? Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God descending, ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Awesome. Praise God. Anybody else? Listen to what the Lord says in this. Somebody else. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I may believe that's important. Amen. What else? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Powerful. What else? Verily, verily. If you got a red letter in addition, all you got to do is keep looking at the red letters. We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. Verily, verily, I say unto you, when you were young, you girded yourself and walked where you would. But when you shall be old, you shall stretch forth your hands, and another shall gird you and carry you where you would not. Verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Man, I believe that one was said, Joe. I'm sorry. Hey, you're okay. <laughs> How about verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour has come, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Is that pretty good? Hallelujah. Any else? Awesome. Very, very. didn't bring your Bible, you're sunk. You know why I'm doing this? So you start bringing your Bibles to church. Some of the people are going like this. Hallelujah. Hear me. Praise God. I believe we need to carry this thing all the time, folk. I'm telling you. Bless God. We've, we've got to know the scriptures in these last days. Hallelujah. Because understand this. Uh, I believe there's going to be a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we've got to know the scriptures. Hear me. The Stand on the name of Jesus. And if we don't know the scriptures, bless the Lord. If you don't know where John is, just get in front of the Bible and it'll give you the page number. Yep. Amen? Yep. Give you the page number. Praise the Lord forevermore. But these are some of the ways that you can study the Word of God just by simple, simple uh, uh, word studies. Verily, verily. So I went in and started looking at all the verily, verilies. And most of your verily, verilies comes out of the book of John. Hallelujah. I, don't, I forget. I didn't put down how many was verily, verilies was there, but... There's probably about 20 of them in the book of John itself. 
not alone just verily I say unto you, praise the Lord forevermore. That's another study in itself. Bless God. But when you start reading these, and like I said, when Jesus said verily, verily, he says, I'm saying something very, very important. You need to have your ears on. You need to hear what I'm saying spiritually. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but when I see that, my ears are perked up because I, I know that the Lord's trying to put a, cro a principle across or a teaching across that will bring about uh, an admonishing and the building up of the character and of the faith of the child of the living God. And somebody said amen. Praise the Lord. Let's get into the word tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Not now somebody else had to verily, verily there. Go ahead, Marvin. I don't think that 524 says very, very, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Amen. Powerful, powerful scripture. Bless God. Don't that, that just speaks into you. When you stop and you think on it and meditate on it, it speaks right into your heart and right into your life. Bless the Lord. Let's get into the scripture tonight. Bless God in the book of Mark. Last week we finished the fifth chapter of Mark, the raising of, uh, of the dead of Jairus' da daughter. Uh, let me remind you, Jesus cannot operate, hear me now, Jesus cannot operate in the atmosphere of doubt and unbelief. Hear me. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. As we've seen in Mark 5, 39 and 40, listen to what it says. And when he was come in, of course it's come into the house, Jesus, talking about uh, Jairus' daughter. Remember he come into the house, we taught about that last week. Come into the house, and they had professional mourners in there, mourning and carrying on, you know, and, and weeping for the dead. And uh, he, when he come in, and when he has come in, in, he said unto them, Why make you this ado, and weep? The damsel's not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. They laughed him to scorn. Now look uh, closely at the next sentence. But when he had put them all out. He put them all out. You see, he had to clear the house of the scorners and the, and the doubters and the unbelievers so he could function, move, and operate. Hallelujah. Un understand something. Uh, doubt and, and, and fear and worry literally, listen, places faith in, in, in anything and everything but the faith in the Word of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. When we come into the house of God, I believe each and every one of us, how, praise the Lord, are to be believers and not doubters. Amen? Believers and not doubters. Bless the Lord. You see, the Lord had to put the scorners and he had to put the, the unbelievers out. Ought not the house of God be filled with a bunch of believers? Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. And if the atmosphere of the church is filled with faith, shouldn't we expect something good to happen tonight? Hey! Bless God! I don't know about you, but I had a good time today worshiping and praising the Lord and in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. We ought to be expecting something to take place. I'm going to get fed the Word of God tonight. Bless the Lord. Anybody ever invite you out to, to maybe a, a lunch or maybe out to dinner? And man, they're, they, they're saying, hey, I'm going to take you to one of the most expensive restaurants. We're going to give you every, anything you want to eat. Can I tell you something? Man, you can't wait to that magic hour. Hallelujah. You're expecting to sit down at that table. Bless God. Belly up to the table. Hallelujah. And begin to feast on what is placed before you in the name of the Lord. You're expecting to have a good meal. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I'm expecting to have a good meal here tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Understand. Listen. Hallelujah. Doubt and unbelief has got to stay out of the house of God. Because uh, when, when there's doubt and unbelief, Christ can't move, function, and flow, and operate in, in that type of atmosphere. I've said it many, many times. The Lord moves on the grounds of faith. I said he moves on the grounds of faith. You know as well as I do in the book of he, uh, Hebrews, the heroes of faith, the 12th chapter, it says without faith it's impossible to please God. Faith is just simply believing and trusting in the word of God. I believe God's word is truth. Say that with me. I believe God's word is truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But, but say this with me if you would please. Jesus Christ... Same yesterday, same yesterday, today, today, 
and forever. I'm expecting him to save people. I'm expecting him to heal people. Hallelujah. I'm expecting him to show up in the house of God. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Should Listen, if the resurrection or if the I am, the resurrection and the life is in the house, ought not the be nots in our life be quickened by resurrection power? <laughs> I believe so. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm going to church, bless God, and I'm going to get the word. I'm going to church, and I'm getting healed. I'm going to church. I want to get in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm not coming to church because I have to go to church. I'm not coming to church because it's out of habit or duty. I'm coming because I love God. God, and I want to be built up, hallelujah, in my spirit man. I believe we need to be built up tonight. I believe our batteries are low and we need to be charged tonight. Somebody say amen. You're talking about me, pastor, hallelujah. Well, can I tell you something? Bless God. God wants to charge our batteries tonight. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I'm ready for a charge. Would you do that? Bless the Lord. But anyhow, listen, we see that what the Holy Spirit is doing, even as we're speaking now, now, he's challenging us on the battlefields of our mind, hear me, hallelujah, just like Jairus, only believe. Say it with me. Only believe. What does God require when you step into this door? Hallelujah. What does he require? Hallelujah to the Lamb when somebody comes forward to be prayed for? Only believe. Bless the Lord. That's the requirement, but that's easier said than done. Because the flesh says, no, it's impossible. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. Listen, as I just quoted uh, or just spoke about Virginia Dunson. Well, all the reports said no. But you know what? God's got final say so in everything. Hallelujah. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And the prayer of doubt shall save the sick. Did you? catch that got your ears on it didn't say the it it didn't say the prayer of doubt it said the prayer of faith faith in what faith in Jesus and his finished work on the cross of Calvary hallelujah to the lamb hear me if God is in the house bless the Lord all we've got to do is believe him we've got to believe him bless the Lord and can I tell you something this whole book challenges us it's on the battlefields of our mind, and that's where the battle is up here. Hear me. Hallelujah. In every cir- circumstance, in every situation, is to stand and believe. Matter of fact, it's a part of your weapons, hear me, in the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter. After done all, stand. Stand in faith, believing and trusting the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. His Bible. The Bible says his word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish the very thing he sends it to be. Hallelujah. Only believe. God is challenging this body here tonight. Only believe. What are you facing tonight? What giant are you facing? What valley are you going through? Hear me. Can I say this to you? Don't look at Pastor Martin and say, well, that's Pastor Martin speaking. No, this is the Lord speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit. He stands and edifies and exhorts us, stand and believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord forevermore. It doesn't take any more effort, hear me, to believe the Lord than to believe uh, something bad or ugly. So let's just stake our claim upon the promise of the Lord and say, bless God, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what I see, no matter what I feel, I believe the report of the Lord Jesus Christ. His report says I'm saved. His report says I'm healed. His report says I'm sealed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So I don't know about you, but let us stand and let us believe the report of the Lord. Mark 9, 23 says, If you can't believe, he said all things are possible to him that believes. Can I say it again? If you can't believe, he said all things are possible to him that believes. With this in mind, let's go into chapter 6. Six, because chapter six carries carries the tone of what we're just what, what chapter five is talking about doubt and unbelief. Let's look at this, if we would, please, for just a little bit. Mark six, one through six, 
it says this, and he went out from thence, out from where? From Jairus' house, raising the daughter, and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished. One, one, one uh, translation is they was dumbfounded, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? You see, a series of questions arose in the hearts and minds of those that, that, that heard his preaching and his teaching. Number one, how can this man preach and teach? Where did he get his ability? Number two, who gave him such wisdom? He didn't attend the the, the theological schools, and they had theological schools back then. Where did he get this wisdom? Number three, where did, he, where did this power come from? Understand Christ, hallelujah to the Lamb. He was all powerful. He's all wisdom. He's all knowledge. That's the type of God we serve. I'm glad, I'm glad I serve him. Amen. But those series of questions, listen, they're, they're, they're valid today. Where did he get all these things? Well, let's, let me endeavor to answer the questions through Scripture. How many know Scripture interprets Scripture? Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Scripture interprets Scripture. Praise the Lord forevermore. In Matthew 3, 16, hallelujah, where did he get the wisdom? Where did he get the power? Where did he get all this ability to do what he was doing? Matthew 3, 16, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Now keep this in mind. Hallelujah. Some might already be answering the question, where did he get this power? Where did he get this wisdom? Where did he get this ability? Well, Luke 4, 18 and 19 tells us exactly where he got it. Okay? Hallelujah. Luke 4, 18 and 19. Let's read it together if we would, please. I'll give you a little bit of time to flip over there. Luke 4, 18 and 19. Everybody there? Let's read it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now with these two scriptures in mind, where did Jesus get his power? Where did he get his wisdom? Where did he get his authority? With the, by reading these scriptures. Through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. This same Holy Spirit indwelt the disciples. Stop and think of this a second. Acts 4.13 Listen to what it says, Acts 4, 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. How in the world could these disciples that were fishermen by trade preach with such boldness, display so much power that a lame man from his mother's womb, listen, was raised up Hallelujah, and his ankles and his legs received strength where he ran and leaped, praising and glorifying God when he went into the temple. Hallelujah. That very same power that empowered Jesus now empowering the disciples. It's the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Let's go back a couple of chapters here in, in the book of Acts and see this infilling of the Holy Spirit, which is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But as we go back there, let me give you this. Uh, uh, scripture John four eleven John prophesied of it at his baptism. He said, "I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire." Everybody say, "Baptize with the Holy Ghost." One more time, baptize with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Understand something, folk. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This baptism of the Holy Spirit is a submerging in the power of God Almighty. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is resurrection power. 
That's what raised Jesus from the dead. That's what raised Je- or, I'm sorry, raised Lazarus from the dead. Hear me. That's what raised, listen, that's what raised Jairus' daughter. Resurrection power. Praise the Lord forevermore. It's all the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Baptized in the Holy Spirit means a submerging in the Holy Spirit. Bless God. Hallelujah. And, uh, understand something. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit is different than being just having the Holy Spirit. Hear me. You can have the Holy Spirit, but yet not be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? Now, I don't want to make a te- teaching out of this. Hear me. But uh, I want to go into the, uh, into the book of Mark more. And w- this is a whole study in itself. Hear me. But after, after you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit instantly comes into your heart and starts a work in you. Hallelujah. Then there's a second work of grace, hear me, called the baptism, a submerging into the power of God's Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord. That's what we're talking about here. Now let's look at this, if we would, please, in Acts 1. Let me get up there, Acts 1. Acts 1, 1 through 8. Or let's just let's just start with the fourth verse, okay? And being assembled together with them, talking about Jesus here, help me, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, You have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. I like this part. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Notice verse 4, hallelujah, he commanded them to go and wait for the promise. Not a suggestion, but commanded them to be endowed with this power. Hear me, hallelujah, to the Lamb. The disciples, the Lord speaking to them and saying, I want you to be endowed from this power from upon high. Hallelujah to the Lamb. In verse 8 it says, But you shall receive power, our dunamis, Greek word there means dunamis, miracle working power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses, hallelujah, unto me. Bless God. So we see, hear me, hallelujah, this, this power, this dunamis, this dynamite power, bless God, this baptism of the Holy Spirit, is for the power to witness the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me. It's power to lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. Bless the Lord. It's power, bless God, to expound upon the scriptures with wisdom and, and, and knowledge. Bless God, like you've never known or, re- or, or known before. It's not knowledge that comes from, from uh, 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 the world system. But it's supernatural knowledge and ability to reveal, uh, God reveals through the power of His Holy Spirit to enlighten uh, to our understanding, hallelujah, the revelation of the Word that He's speaking to us. Bless God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But you shall be witnesses unto me, hallelujah, in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. I don't know about you, but you can tell people that are baptized in the Holy Spirit and people that aren't baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying that... Listen, anybody that's not baptized in the Holy Spirit, they're a second-rate Christian. No, we're all Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. No, I'm just encouraging those that are not filled or baptized in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Don't give up on the Lord. Keep asking God, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And He will. Hallelujah. He says, if you ask bread, will you give you a serpent? No. Hallelujah. How much more? You know, if we know how to give good gifts to our earthly kids, how much more will your Father give you the Holy Ghost? Praise the Lord. So never, never, never give up. Bless the Lord forevermore. Acts 2. Look at Acts 2. Let's see what happens here. 2, 1 through 4. Hallelujah. Let's read it together. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Remember, he commanded them to go tarry and wait. So you know what they're doing? 
They're listening to God's word, the Lord's word. That's what they're doing. Hallelujah. Read. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were setting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. I, I watched uh, the last part of the, uh, the Bible. Anybody see that history channel? And it really shocked me and floored me that, uh, you know, it, it showed uh, the disciples speaking in other tongues. And I thought, praise God, that's awesome. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But understand something. We believe and we teach in this church, hallelujah, that, that if anybody gets baptized in the Holy Spirit, the evidence of that is speaking in other tongues. As you go through the book of Acts, all those that received the Holy Spirit or the baptism, they all spoke with tongues as the Spirit of God. God gave utterance. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. That same endowment, hear me, are, 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 who's this promise for? Is it, was it just for uh, those in the book of Acts? Was it just for, for the disciples of that time? No. Listen to what Acts 2.39 says. Acts 2.39. Let's read it. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Well, that puts me right in there. Hallelujah. God called me, so I'm a candidate, near me, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Bless God. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I am baptized with the Holy Spirit. And yes, I do speak with other tongues. I'm not doing that to brag. Bless the Lord. But understand me. Hallelujah. I'm, I've got just what they've got in the book of Acts here. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God came into them, and they began to speak with tongues. The Spirit of the Lord, hear me, filled me, infilled me, and I began to speak with other tongues, just like the Bible said. And somebody said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. Those that want to argue, listen, with Scripture, they might argue with Scripture and say this has been done away with, but understand me, all they've got is an argument. I've got an experience. I've got a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that if you would please? Bless the Lord. Let them go ahead and argue, do what they want to do, but there are people that are hungry yet today and God is filling them with the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I believe that's what the church needs today. It's not more novel methods, hear me. It's not more man's programs. All we need most is the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is free in every heart and every life and can I tell you something bless the Lord we'll have church in Jesus name and everybody said amen every every man every woman every child that's born again hallelujah bless God needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit needs that baptism of power in Jesus name hallelujah to the lamb the, uh, the it goes the call goes out to every generation which is my generation and if the Lord should tear it goes on to the next generation, the next generation after that. All that, that, that uh, uh, believe and all that receive. That's the, that's the, that's the, the, the very, uh, what's the word I want, diagram that we, we receive of the Lord is number one. We've got to believe it's for us today and we've got to receive it. Say it with me. Believe it and receive it. One more time. Believe it and receive it. One more time. Believe it. And receive it. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But if you don't believe it, you're not going to receive it. If we got doubt, unbelief, we say, well, it comes from the devil. This is from the devil. Understand something, folk. Hear me. If we're asking of God for the Holy Spirit, he's not going to give us a serpent. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm afraid I might get into some, you know, um, bad spirit. No, 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 no. Get, don't even go that direction. Hear me. That's where doubt and unbelief comes in. Hallelujah. All you've got to do is just believe God and receive what the Word of God says. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. And can I tell you something? The harder they try to stamp it out, the further it spreads. <laughs> you can't stop God. You can't stop a move of God. Hear me. 
When God puts his mind to move, he's going to move. And everybody said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to Mark 6, 3 through 5. Get back to this in, in Mark 6, 3 through 5. Let's read it together. They began to reason among themselves. How many know they're getting in trouble now? They was astonished at first. Now they're getting themselves in trouble. Why? Because they're starting to reason. Here's the doubt. Look what they say. Let's read it. Is not this the carpenter? The son of Mary, look at me. These people was raised with Jesus. They grew up with him. He was a hometown boy. He's in his hometown. They know him. Hallelujah. And here, listen, they start reasoning inside themselves and saying, this is the carpenter's son. Man, we've seen him working on houses. We've seen him making yokes for oxen and what have you. Look what it says. The son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Think of this. <laughs> they, they disapproved him. Why? But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Look at me for just a second here. You know, you can sympathize with what Jesus is saying here. Because many times... It's easier after you're born again and say that there's many in your household that are unsaved. Hear me, they're not saved at all. And you radically get saved. I mean, there's a transformation like a, a, a metamorphosis uh, going from a caterpillar, an old worm, into a beautiful butterfly. And they see that, hear me. But then again, they begin to say, well, I was raised with this guy. I know how he was, or how he is. But can I tell you something? I can say how I was, B.C., before Christ. Amen? But I've found a lot of times it's harder to speak to my own family than what it is a foreigner or a stranger. I find it more easier to speak to them than what it is in my home family. Hear me? Hallelujah. But most of our family is saved, so bless God, we thank God for that. But understand this. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Why is it sometimes it's so hard to speak to our own loved ones, our own family members? Because they know us. And they know how we used to be. And you know what? They're looking at you and seeing if you're going to stay with this thing, if there's really been a change in you, or if this is just a some type of a facade or some type of a, 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 a trance that maybe you've been into and before long you're going to come out of this. But you know what? After the days and months and the years go by, they see that, man, there's no change. I mean, there's, they, they're staying with this. There really must be a change there. But hear me. I've found it many times, as I said, when Christ comes into your heart and your life, a lot, of, a lot of the ones that you've been reared up with, a lot of your friends that you grew up in high school with, and you ran around with them, and what have you, they look at you and say, man, what happened to you? What happened to you? You used to be fun. You used to be a, you used to be, be, be a lot of fun to hang around. Now you're no fun at all. All you want to do is talk about Jesus. Well, what else is there to talk about? Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. When you talk about Jesus, hallelujah, the one that saved me by His grace and His mercy, He's the one that fulfilled every desire in my heart and in my life. Bless the Lord. I don't, know, I don't have to go out and drink. I don't have to go out and drug. Hear me? I don't have to go out and party. That's what most, of, most people do. That's, that's, that's what their life consists of. That's what mine consisted of. Couldn't wait till, till Friday night. Friday night was the big night, man. You went out to Harold's Bar or JoJo's Bar or, or you went to the Century Club or what have you and you just, you know, wasted your, your money on wine, women, and music. And then Sunday came along and Monday was pulling the chain, pulling you back. And that, that was just a, 
a brutal routine that you went through day or week, weekend after weekend, hear me, year after year after year, and after a while it gets stagnating. Are you hearing me? It gets stagnating inside. The Bible said sin is fun for a season, but then all of a sudden Satan pulls the rug out from underneath of you. And I, 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 once Christ come into my heart and into my life changed me, I found the contentment of life and the friends that I hung around with. Bless the Lord. I wanted them to get what I've got. I wanted to give it to them. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And anybody that's really genuinely saved and bonafide filled with the Holy Spirit, you want to give it to somebody. Hallelujah. And, and I don't know, I might have been a little bit forceful as being young in the Lord and saying, man, I've got the answer. I know what you're looking for, man. Here's the joy. Here's the contentment. You can be high 365 days a year. You don't have to wait to Friday night. And it's not just a, a temporary thing, but it's an everlasting river bubbling up in your innermost being. They go, whoa, what in the world happened to you? You're crazy. But you see, they didn't understand. Hear me. And it wasn't long. Those friends that I thought were friends, they forsook me. They got away from me. Because to, to them, I was boring. No, I was transformed. I went from an old ugly worm into a beautiful butterfly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what happened to you. And that's why sometimes it's hard for your own family to recognize you and your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was going through this problem. He went there and they started reasoning in their thoughts, in their minds. Is not this the carpenter's son? <laughs> well, here's his, here's his brothers. Right here. Here's his sisters. And you know what? False teaching says that they didn't have any, Mary didn't have any kids. You might as well rip that page out of your Bible. Because right here you're seeing where, where Mary had several children. Uh, and Jesus had half brothers and, and uh, half sisters. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord forevermore. But man, I'm telling you, hear me. They start reasoning inside of themselves and saying, we grew up with this guy. And besides that, you could hear the whispers behind the back. He's an illegitimate baby. We know that because that's what they thought. Mary become pregnant, but they didn't know who the man was. Joseph didn't even know who it was. He was going to put her away. Remember the story? That's another teaching in itself, but bless the Lord forevermore. But that was, that was, was being whispered in behind his back. He's an illegitimate child. Hear me. And he's proclaiming to be the son of God. Come on. Let's get real here. Reasoning inside of themselves. And, and uh, the fifth verse says this. Look what it says. Hallelujah. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Hallelujah. Can we see how unbelief hinders the work of the Lord? Where he went into all the other cities... And, and, and raise the dead, open blinded eyes, unstopped deaf ears, hear me, performed all different types of miracles, cast out devils, and now he goes into his own town, and he could do no mighty miracles in that town because of unbelief. Hallelujah. Now let's take this to another level. What about if he come, what about in the church house? He comes into the church house and all he sees in the church house is a bunch of unbelievers and doubters. What can we expect? Maybe a few people get blessed, but that's it. Hallelujah. But when Christ is in the house, hallelujah, the atmosphere of faith should be the, uh, to the level of the ceiling. Hallelujah. And understand something. You're a product of what you are through the week. <laughs> it's not just going to happen on one day Sunday. And if all you are is a Sunday day Christian, I, I shouldn't be preaching this on Wednesday, teaching this on Wednesday night, 
But if all a, all's a person is is just a Sunday morning person, hear me, and it's just a routine that they go through, a religious routine, understand something, there'll be very few miracles, very few movings of the Spirit of God. But, folk, I want to tell you something. When you've got a whole bunch of believers in the house, it drowned out the doubters. I said it will drown out the doubters. Hallelujah. What God is looking for is somebody to trust Him and somebody to believe Him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I say let faith arise in the hearts and lives of the people of Harvest Field every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday, every time we gather together here in the house of the living God. Hallelujah. One to put a thousand and two will put ten thousand to flight in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. As I said, Christ moves in the arena on the grounds of faith. And as I, uh, we know what faith is, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I don't see it, but I still believe it. I don't see it, but I still believe it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I don't see, hear me, I don't see revival, but I believe revival's coming. I don't see it, I don't feel it, but I believe it. I said I believe it. It's going to happen. Why? Because His Word declares it's going to happen before He returns to take His church home. He's not coming back for a doubting church. He's not coming back for a defeated church. He's coming back, my God, I'm going to get happy here tonight. He's coming back for a glorious church without spot are without wrinkle in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, which tells me one thing, he's coming back for a triumphant church and not a defeated church in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. My Lord, give me this mountain, Caleb said. Hallelujah. There's still enemy territory to be held. Caleb, at the age of 80 years old, he says, when I was young, I was a young pup. Hallelujah. God was with me then. Even now I'm old, yet the vision that God placed into my heart and into my life. There's yet territory here in Canaan land to be possessed. He said, he rallies up like a banny rooster, hear me. And he says, give me this mountain, bless God. It belongs to me. There's enemy held territory, listen, that we need to take in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of them might be your loved ones. Some of them might be sickness, disease, infirmity. Let us not lay down, hear me, with our tail between our legs and say, well, ain't nothing we can do about it. Yes, we can do something about it. We can stand up and set ourselves in agreement in prayer and believe the report of the Lord God and see the giants fall and see the mountains melt at the presence of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Somebody put a smile on their face tonight. Would you do that? Bless God forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. God is going to show up in the house of God. Bless the Lord forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. The Bible says it was a real of him that called those things that weren't as though they were. Hallelujah. If we can see through the eyes of the Lord, praise God, the things that we can't see, hallelujah, but yet we still believe it and we still call it forth in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. I'd done that when the, when the doctors told my wife and I we couldn't have children. I would stand up in front of the congregation because I know what God put in my heart and say, bless God, I thank God that God's going to give us children. (laughs) Hallelujah. Every Sunday morning, I'd get up and do that. And you know what? The people got sick and tired of me saying those things. And they got mad at me for saying those things. But can I tell you something? They turned their madness and their scoffing, listened to joy, hallelujah, when our babies started coming forth. When God gives you something, something he gives you a promise if you stand on it listen no matter how long it takes hear me child of God bless God don't let anybody steal it away from you hallelujah it's going to accomplish the very thing God sends it to do in the name of the Lord Jesus praise God forevermore and evermore and if the Lord uh, if the Lord should tarry as I said I've got 12 grandkids Hallelujah, and I thought, you know the, our girls are not going to have any more 12 is going to be it but if the Lord should tarry Hallelujah, and my grandkids grow up, and I'm still here. I'm going to have a lot of great-great-grandkids. And somebody said, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah, I'm going to have the tribe of Martin. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But it all started out with, and I told Jeremy this has been a while back. We were sitting there in the living room of the house and had all the kids. The living room was just full of kids. And I think it was Jeremy said, could you, could, you, could you believe this back years ago that it would be like this? And, you know, I said, the Lord gave me a promise that my children would be like olive plants around about my table. Hallelujah. And that I would see my children's children. Can I tell you something? God has held true to that promise. I have seen my children's children. Praise the Lord forevermore. So I want to tell you something. Hear me. I know God's word is truth. I've seen too many miracles. I've seen too many people get saved. Seen too many people delivered from demonic uh, spirits. Seen too many people, hear me, loose from, from bondages in the name of Jesus to just believe the report of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. So easily we forget the triumphant victories that God has brought us through. Never. Never let us forget, child of God. Matter of fact, the greatest victory was at the cross of Calvary. Hear me, when Jesus hung on that cross. And here's what the Lord said. He said, do this in remembrance of me. When we take the, or the, the, the uh, partake of the, the supper, hallelujah, or communion, he said, do this in remembrance of me. What? Looking back at what was accomplished at the cross. Can I tell you something? You can look back at the victories. That's what I was trying to say this just a little while ago, we can look back at the victories that Christ has wrought in our hearts and in our lives over the years that will drown out the doubt and the unbelief. But it's so easy to forget where we've come from and where we're at now. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You look at the children of Israel, the mighty works that God did for them, and it wouldn't be three days and they'd forget what God done for them just three days ago. They forgot the power of God. Hallelujah. Let us never forget the blessings that the Lord God has bestowed upon us. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. The greatest blessing of all is being saved and your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Please don't ever let that become old hat to you to where we become complacent and we become uh, stagnant stagnated and dried, but let the love of God permeate in your heart and in your life to where you keep falling in love with Him over and over again and every service is like you're being saved all over again. And somebody said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I realize it's Wednesday night, but I'm happy tonight. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He could do no mighty works save that He laid His hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Hallelujah. I say, let God arise and the enemies of God be scattered. Say it with me. Let God arise and the enemies of God be scattered. Verse 6 says, look what it says. And he marveled because of their unbelief. I wonder what he's saying about the church today. Can you just imagine that? I wonder what he's saying about his people today. He marveled because of their unbelief. God cannot say or heal anyone who will not believe. Think of it. The, to get on first base with the Lord is number one, we have got to believe. We've got to believe. Jesus has said to marvel in only one other instance, and that was outstanding faith. Stop and think of this. In Matthew 7, 9, of course, that was uh, uh, the, the centurion's servant. When Jesus heard the these things he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto, unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Remember when the centurion said, I'm a man under authority, and I say to this soldier, go here, and he's got to go. He recognized the authority in the spoken word of Jesus. He said, all I want you to do is speak the word because I know your word has authority. Hallelujah. You can say to my daughter, be healed, and my daughter is going to be healed. He he was a satyrian. He was a Gentile outside of the, the covenant of, of the Lord God Almighty. He said, I'm not worthy that you should even come underneath my roof. Stop and think of this a second. Bless the Lord. But he said, speak the word only. And Jesus marveled. 
Hallelujah. In, 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 in Mark, we've seen where Jesus marveled at their unbelief. Here he's marveling at this guy's faith that he has. Hallelujah. Just turned completely around. Bless the Lord. Ought not he marvel at the faith of Harvest Field? Oh, that's a weak amen. <laughs> amen, Pastor Martin. Bless God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord forever. You see, we've got to be around like-minded people. You stay around doubters, look at me. You're going to end up being a doubter. You know why? Because they're going to lay all their problems on you when they ought to be laying all their problems on the Lord. Casting all our cares upon Him, for He careth for you. One of the worst things you can ever do are say, listen, in the beginning of a conversation, how are you doing? Worst thing you can ever say. The best thing you can ever say in the, in the, in the beginning of a conversation, how are you believing today? Ever think of that? How are you believing today? I'm believing God to heal my body. I'm believing God to give me strength today. I'm believing God that's going to take care of this situation that I'm encountering. I can't do it on my own, but I know with God and through God, we shall triumph valiantly over this thing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Not, well, I don't know, you know. I'm just going, blah, 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 and it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And the victory testimony turns into the defeat testimony. Amen? And I'm not ridiculing or, or, or trying to make people mad at me, no. But folk, understand something. God has called us to believe His report. Bless the Lord. When that doctor told me I was fat, you know what I want to tell him? He's ugly. But you know what? He told me the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. Oh, thank God for an amen. He told me the truth. He said, my weight's going to, you're, it's going to hinder you if you don't take care of it. Hear me. So therefore, look at me. I took his word at it. I mean, it bothered me when he said, hey, you're fat. He could have said rotund. He could have said thick. <laughs> he could have said chunky. <laughs> but fat? That's kind of an eye opener. <laughs> Bless God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But I'm trying to eat properly. Seriously, I am trying to eat properly and lose a few pounds to where I feel good. Bless the Lord. And I know, listen, when you lose weight, you feel good. That's all there is to it. Hallelujah. I'll let your doctor talk to you. I won't talk to you because you get mad at me. I'll let you get mad at your doctor. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But you know, he just told me the truth. And what Jesus is saying, the truth here, bless the Lord forevermore. It's not something to get mad at, but it's something to challenge our faith. Let's get out of this stinking thinking and let's start glorifying God. Let's start glorifying Him for the victory in the name of the Lord Jesus instead of speaking doubt and unbelief. Hallelujah to the Lord. Praise God. Well, the weather's going to be 55 degrees, yeah, but it's going to snow tomorrow. There's always that, well, I've got a half a tank of gas, you know, running on empty. Well, you're half full, too. It's cloudy out. Well, the sun's still shining. Amen. You get in a jet, you fly above the clouds, and I guarantee you the sun's still shining. Hallelujah. But all we want to talk about is the cloudy. Oh, cloudy day. Hear me. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said we are seated in heavenly places above far, above power and principality and might and dominion. Hallelujah. Positionally, we are seated with Him in heavenly places. Bless God. That's not to say we don't have cloudy days. Yes, we have cloudy days, but the S-O-N still shines. Amen. Amen. I said He still shines. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. But he marveled because of their unbelief. And here he marvels at this satirian of the faith that he has. I've not seen so much great faith. No, not in Israel. Back to Mark 6, 7. And he called unto him the twelve 
and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits. Hallelujah. He sent them forth by, uh, forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits. Jesus now brings his disciples into a next level of faith. He commissions them to go forth carrying the word of authority. Look at me. The word apostle here, when you look at word apostle, it simply means to send forth with a commission. How many apostles do we have in here tonight? You're an apostle. We are sent forth with a commission. Hallelujah. You might not fold... You might not hold the five-fold ministry of an apostle, but understand me, hallelujah, in accordance with what, what the, the word itself means, we are sent forth with a commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Every one of us are commissioned to do that. Amen? Hallelujah. We could use the English word ambassadors are representatives. Everybody say that. Ambassadors and representatives. Now understand, Jesus handpicked each one of his disciples with a promise. Each one of them he picked, handpicked in Mark 1, 17, and Jesus said unto them, here's the promise, and I will make you to become fishers of men. That was his sole purpose. He picked the 12. They followed him in the beginning. Now he's going to commission them. They go up to another level of faith. He's going to commission them to go out into the highways and out into the byways. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. They heard the message. They seen the demonstration of his promise. Now Jesus gives them authority to go out as a sent one for him. Hallelujah. They're ambassadors for him. Bless the Lord. Can I tell you something? This is the very way Jesus operates for you and I today. He calls us. He disciples us. And then he sends us forth with power. Stop and think of it a second. He calls us, disciples us and then sends us forth. Say that with me. Calls us, disciples us, and then sends us forth. One more time. Calls us, disciples us, and sends us forth. 2 Corinthians 6.20 says, We are ambassadors for Christ. You and I are representatives of a heavenly kingdom. The kingdom of God. Look at me. I represent God's kingdom. Say that with me. I represent God's kingdom. You represent God's kingdom. Well, where'd you get your authority to do that? Jesus commissioned me in the, in the word. Hallelujah. He sent me forth to be an ambassador for him, to be a representative for him. And look at me. He's given me power. He's given me authority to do that very th- same thing that he did. Bless the Lord. That's what he did for his disciples. He said, I give you power and I give you authority, listen, over unclean spirits and sends them forth out into the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But we're representatives of the kingdom of God. Look at me for a second here. You know what? The only Bible somebody's going to read is your life. You. And I know one thing. I don't want to be a stumbling block to somebody that's looking for Jesus. If, if my walk is a walk that reflects the very image of the world, you know what? It's not going to point him to Christ. But if my walk and my talk, listen, come together in agreement, hallelujah, and we walk the walk and talk the talk, look at me, somebody's going to watch your life. And the only Bible that they will read is you. 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 I said this before, but it bears repeating. I got a letter, it's been years ago, back when we was in the other church across the road, across 127 in town, and some man wrote me a letter and said, this certain person goes to your church. They are stealing our company, he's stealing our company blind. Every time, you know, you turn around, he's stealing this, he's stealing that. He said, do you teach your people that and and he, he he said this he said you need to to put that person down and uh, uh, chide with them and throw them out of your church because they're bad representation listen for your church you know what the response was that I give to him I'm responsible for what goes in this church I'm not responsible for the people that go out of this church 
I can't live your life for me, and you can't live your life for me. You've got to live it for the Lord. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. I, I, I don't run a dictatorship here and try to control people's lives. Understand that. Hallelujah. I'm not in a control freak manner to try to control people. But listen, that's the job of the Holy Spirit. But I do know this. Hallelujah. The only, only Bible that people will read is how we conduct ourselves outside of this church. We can act holy in this church, but we can act a little bit different outside of this church. Come on. Come on. And brothers and sisters, hear me. One day we'll stand before the almighty judge of God, Jesus Christ, and we'll give an account of how we lived our life as being Christians. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the judgment seat of Christ. I want to hear the Lord say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Bless the Lord. And you know what I say? I'm not saying that, that we're perfect. There, there's no perfect human being in here. Hear me. If there is, I want to take a picture of you and we'll worship you, okay? There's only one person that's perfect, and that's Jesus. The perfect Lamb of God. But hear me. We have got to conduct our life in accordance to what the Word of God declares. I can't live a loose life and be a representative of the kingdom of God without it affecting the unsaved world. Let me know what we're talking about. In other words, if I go out of this church and I start and I, and I, I I'm drunk, drunk Monday night, somebody's watching me. Or if my garbage man picks up my garbage and I've got three six packs of beer in my garbage can, might not even be yours. Might be somebody else. Maybe your neighbors throw their garbage in your garbage. And you get tagged for it. He's a drunkard. He's a drunkard. Don't tell me people don't look at your lives and read you. Sinners, listen, they'll look at you and try to find fault in you. Our lives ought to be, be, be reflecting the very glory of God Almighty. How our lives ought to be pure, holy, righteous unto God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Because I've even heard this, and you probably have too. Well, if they're a Christian, is that what Christians do? Is that what they believe? I thought there's supposed to be a change here someplace. See, they're looking and seeing if you are genuine. <laughs> you ask any sinner, what's a Christian to be like? And you know what? They'll read your pedigree. They'll tell you right down to a T. No drinking, no chewing, no smoking, no running around. They'll tell you right down along the T because those are the things that they're doing. They're looking for somebody that's really got a change in their life that they can watch over the days, over the months, and over the years and say, truly, there's a Christian right there. That's what I did with my brother. You know what, even though I ridiculed, mocked him, and, and rejected him, but yet he still lived godly before me and before the family, and we watched him like a hawk. He was the only Bible that we was reading in the household. And look at me. It affected this person. It affected me. Praise the Lord forevermore. He didn't become a stumbling block to me. But I said, if there is a God in heaven, which I do, knew that there was, I wasn't an atheist, Hear me. Hallelujah. That's the God that I want to serve, the one that he's serving. Bless the Lord. And can I tell you something? I come into that relationship with the living Savior in the name of the Lord Jesus. So understand me. Someone say, well, you know, it's not affecting anybody but me. No, no, no. Get out of the selfish mode. You've got hundreds of people watching you. Might be your relatives. It might be friends. All different types of people watching you. And you know what they're looking? They're looking for one mistake, for you to make that mistake to where they can point a finger and say, is that what Christians do? That's what they're looking for. But you know what the Bible says? 
Let them see our good works that they might glorify God. (laughs) That our life will point them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. We can't go no further. We're, we're, well, matter of, let me give you this scripture before we, we leave tonight. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 2. You are our epistle, Paul talking, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Ep- epistle, the word of the living God, read of all men. Look at me. Somebody's reading your mail. I'd never got that letter from that guy if that guy wasn't watching this other guy. Hear me. Don't tell me it doesn't affect people. It does affect people. And somebody said amen and amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but God has called us to be representatives of his kingdom. Let his glory reflect out of you in the name of Jesus. Can we stand and give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? Bless the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lord. Praise God. He's a good God, and I'm expecting some good things to happen Sunday morning. Invite somebody out to church Sunday morning or Sunday night. Bless the Lord. Let's just believe for people to get saved, healed, delivered, set free. Praise the Lord. Let's just believe for a great, mighty move of God's Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Seth, close us in prayer. Would you, brother?